Hello and welcome to Smile Designer Pro. In this video, we'll be covering the new support for intraoral scan files that was introduced in version 3.1. If you haven't already watched our introductory tutorial, you should start there. This video covers a more advanced workflow incorporating intraoral scan files and other digital models into your 2D planning. So we're going to start at the patient information screen. As you can see, starting with version 3.1 in Smile Designer, you can bring in photos and also 3D model files. So let's bring in our intraoral scan file. In this case, we're using a CareStream color scan file. And uh, you can see that from CareStream, you can export a PLY file that goes along with a JPEG file that contains the color information. Smile Designer Pro supports PLY files, STL files, and some OBJs. Uh, we're working on expanding support for more and more scanners. So if you try this feature um, with your scanner and it doesn't go as you expect, please get in touch with us and we'll add support to your scanner as well. So when we bring in our PLY file, the software renders the model from different views. So we just have to pick the one that has the model oriented correctly with the teeth facing forward. Once we've imported our model, we're ready to go to the next step. Just a quick note about this export files button. Uh, if you share your Smile Designer case through the cloud service, there in the case gallery, there's a share button where you can share your case with any other Smile Designer premium cloud user, including your lab. Um, and on their side, they can basically push this button and export a folder containing all of the patient photos and intraoral scan files that you've attached to the case. So it's an easy way to uh, move 3D data around as well as collaborate with the team. So this step is familiar if you've watched our initial tutorial video. There's nothing special to do here, so we're just going to go to the next step. Now when you bring in an intraoral scan file, there's an extra calibration step where we need to match up this 3D model with the position of the teeth in the photo. Now the software brings the model close to the mouth, but we still need to do the work of matching this up exactly with the position and orientation of the teeth in the photo. We recommend taking your pictures with a 100 millimeter lens so that this fits perfectly. If you take pictures with an iPhone lens or your iPad, there will be lens distortion, which prevents this from matching up correctly. On screen here, we have a few different controls. On the bottom left, we have little positioning controls. And as you saw, I can also click and drag to move the model around quickly. Above the position controls, there are size adjustments. So we can basically scale the teeth to match the size in the photo. On the bottom right side are the rotation controls. So this helps us to orient the model correctly and get it to match up and then tilt it if we need to. And on the bottom middle, we can fade the model in and out. We can basically make these little adjustments and get our model to fit the teeth in the photo. And if you see a difference, then you basically tilt the model until the patient's teeth are not sticking out unevenly between them. This is, again, assuming you took the picture with a 100 millimeter lens, which will cause it to line up. And then we can use our opacity slider to check to make sure that things fit and match up as they do. So once we've done that, we're ready to go to the next step. Now, if you br bring in other model files, you can match them up as well, or just use the same orientation as the initial scan. This uh, 3D support is really useful for doing quality control and also for showing the patient different steps of the process as you go along. So the idea of our intraoral scan support is that it gives you a retracted view of the teeth without actually having to take a retracted picture. So in many cases, if the patient's smiling and displaying enough of the teeth that you can actually do this, 
then it's a great way to kind of speed up your workflow. So in the main editor, the main difference when you use 3D file is that you have another list on the bottom here of the model files. And when you click on it, it makes the model visible. Now you'll notice on the layer editor, there's an extra item for our 3D model. So just like any other layer, we can toggle it on and off. And if we had more of these models, they would be displayed along the bottom here and we could switch between them. So right now we're just going to use this as an intro oil view. And we're going to do our basic design. So let's pretend that's going to be our design for this case. And just going to do a quick design here. Okay, great. The other new interface element you'll notice on the left side here is an extra button that says 3D material. When I click on it, if I haven't already defined the lip mask, it'll ask me to do that before doing anything else. So once we've defined our lip mask, we can adjust this lip shadow effect to help things blend. And then we say OK. So now in the 3D material panel, you'll see there are a bunch of sliders and some shades. So these shades aren't true, correct shades that are calibrated, but they just influence the teeth a little bit. Um, so if you want to be looking at you know, darker or more yellow teeth, you can look at it like that, or you can keep the shade white. Uh, the shadow effect helps the teeth basically blend into the picture a bit better. So you can simulate the shadowing as you recede in the mouth. And we also have exposure and brightness. So brightness affects the value of all the teeth uniformly and exposure is exponential. So it's more like a photographic effect. And then of course we have our shininess slider. So depending on how you took your photo and you want it to match up, uh, you can make the teeth have a lot of reflections or no reflections. So the idea of the 3D material here is just to make it look nice and integrate with the photo a bit better. In the future, we'll have uh, capabilities that go beyond just viewing 3D files and uh, realistic materials for our 3D teeth are really important. So if I toggle off the lip mask, you can see the whole model that is not being cut to look like it's inside the mouth. And when I toggle the lip mask on, it gets cut to look like it's inside the mouth. And if I toggle it one more time, we can look at it in isolation with everything else in the mouth masked out in black. If we bring in other model files, we can actually use this for quality control as we go through the process. For example, if we had a pre-prosthetic ortho plan, we could bring in the STL file of the teeth in their final position and make sure that we're moving the teeth into the correct place uh, so we can restore. And if we scan the final restorations, we can actually bring that back to Smile Designer and see how close did we get to delivering our facially driven treatment plan in the final result. So our initial 3D support is really focused on getting more information in the planning and also doing that quality control step. Smile Designer Pro is a 2D planning tool that as you can see, we're incorporating more and more 3D information to help with that, but it doesn't generate 3D information as of 3.1 that you can use to print a mockup. We're very excited about incorporating 3D technology into Smile Designer Pro. And of course, as we evolve this capability, we are going to keep our focus on you, the users, and making sure that the workflow that we create for you is fast, efficient, and really easy to use. So as we add more 3D capabilities, the focus is really going to be on 
user experience and making sure that we're creating something that's actually practical for you to do and fits in with our ecosystem. So that's pretty much it for this uh, tutorial video. Let us know if you have any questions and uh, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for a lot more from Smile Designer Pro.